Hunt team bad. Dire team bad. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Holy crap, we started perfectly on time. Frickin' pod champ galaxy battle, guys. We are on schedule. We're gonna have complexity. Take on VGJ. Radiant team ban. Have been looking real hot on the global scene. VGJ Storm not quite making it up. Ten seconds remaining. Optic in the grand finals. That's going to be happening Dying tomorrow. So you guys, whenever, whenever those other people are going to come in asking when the grand finals is, is it today? Is it after this? You tell them it's tomorrow. Radiant That's your responsibility, not mine. I'm Mike Loris. I'm casting. That's it. Uh, Complexity have been on a tear recently. They've been doing really well. Got uh, third or fourth. Uh, Plays pretty high uh, in the latest Perfect World Cup. Perfect World Minor Major? I don't know. Uh, Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. The competition, Radiant of course, on that, uh, on that global scene. Quick look at the bands. We have lots of the heavy hitters. Uh, you know, heroes like Omni Knight that DJ Storm first pick pretty frequently. Heroes like Puck, Shakiro. There's very safe opening picks that we see pretty much every team, uh, let alone these two, pick up on a very, very frequent basis. But of course, you can't ban them all. It's going to be a Bane and a Sand King for DJ Storm, and uh, a little bit of flexibility here. These two heroes do work pretty well together. If you're going to pair them up, Nightmare to Burrow Strike is a Pretty nice setup, assuming Radiant your third back. hero in there is you have any sort of damage. Of course, you need a lot of damage going up against a Winter Wyvern and a tiny. Lots of health on this uh, this tiny hero in particular, which of course means lots of healing, so that's, that's all well and good. But uh, you also have that flexibility. We've seen Sneaking play the Sand King in that offlane, and I think uh, it kind of seems like more frequently than not, the Sand King is going to go Five just towards that offlane. And that, though that may be the case, you always have that flexibility and complexity, you always have to consider that option from the VGJ Storm side. The opening of complexity is pretty much full complexity. I, I feel like they've been playing the most tiny, uh, even a little bit before it was reworked, but uh, they definitely are very experienced on the hero. So, you know, getting into their comfort zone right off the bat, there is no IO available for this tiny, but really, nowadays, you don't really need the IO Tiny to, to really work out well. As long as you're able to get some amount of farm in lane, you're going to be fine. Uh, the fact that you can just level up that tree grab. Ten seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Radiant team pick. Tiny used to be before. This one hero in isolation, but yeah, that's not even the case necessarily. Uh, since they have picked up Winter Wyvern, who is not, like, the best combo with Tiny or anything like that. Doesn't offer him anything offensively, really, except for a slow, which is pretty good, but uh, it gives him that save. It gives him that heal. Looking at VGJ Storm's side, they do have quite a bit of non-physical damage. Although Death Prophet is about half physical, maybe two-thirds, depending on what stage of the game is. Uh, the Embrace is still going to be really nice for saving. Uh, the Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Huge health pool. Uh, balanced by the fact that he has no armor. So there's the there's a trade-off there, but uh, you get a lot of healing value with just a couple of levels of that embrace. DJ Storm with a third pick Death Prophet is rather early. 
Well, the hero is picked up pretty much all the freaking time, so it's not a weird pick or anything Radiant like that, but uh, they do have the last pick, note the little tick thing over here, so VJ Storm will be able to grab their mid lane last if they wanted to, and it clear clearly seems like they don't want to. Roya has played the Death Prophet a lot, it seems, and VGJ Storm will uh, you know, have a lot of experience playing with that Death Prophet. From what I've seen, Roya is always able to come into the fight with Exorcism on. And that is an absolutely Five huge difference between minutes. getting into a fight and then turning on Exorcism uh, versus coming into a fight with Exorcism. It doesn't really sound like a lot, but the damage certainly does add up. There's that initial crash in shock value can definitely uh, force the hand of complexity. Uh, hell, the, the cast animation might just get cancelled by Winter's Curse if you don't have it up beforehand, so... VGJ Storm will slide right into their comfort zone. Complexity, uh, well, they're just going to still be a little bit generic. The Tiny is a little bit of flair, although I do think for complexity, at least, it's going to be uh, pretty much the standard. Winter Wyvern and the Slardar should be the supports for complexity, and these two do work quite well together. If you're going to need quite a bit of damage if you're looking to take down... Uh, a support Bane, if it's a support Sand King, is also more so on the bulky side. So, but the fact that the Enchantress, the Freaks, I want to say bread and butter, uh, something he's really good at, banned out. Uh, you, got, you gotta go into the slightly less than ideal, but yeah, still, this combo is quite nice. You get the minus armor with the tiny, and you can definitely beat some heroes down with that branch. It's not a branch, it's a full tree. It's literally a full tree. Guys, I am told that Ahsoka is in fact Yawar. So, uh, now, now no one has to ask that question again. VGJ Storm, what do they want now? Still looking for either another support or an offlaner. It... Uh, able to dodge that. Weaver is not great here, though. They'll pick up a Luna, looking mostly for their lane power. Now, this is both a very strong hero, but a very risky hero for the VGJ Storm side. Uh, Luna, as far as being able to push is concerned, works really well with Death Prophet. If you decide to ball up at any given time, really, you can tear down towers like nobody's business. But uh, the downside is that she's paper thin. And looking at Complexity's draft, especially now that they pick up a Sniper, they can just obliterate Luna from a range. They can just jump in with a Blink Dagger on Slardar and just blow her up with a Tiny. It is going to be a difficult Ten game to play as remaining. Luna because there are just so many options for complexity as far as... Five seconds remaining. So, yeah, you're going to have to rely on that Death Ball. And that's really where the lack of save is potentially going to hurt the VGJ Storm side. And obviously the same can't be said going the other way around. Winter Wyvern is here for complexity. Sniper the pick is going to be the response to that Death Prophet looking in towards that mid lane. Team it's a solid matchup for sure. Sniper with his projectile is going to try to keep himself very defensively positioned. Bane rotations, Sand King rotations, these are, these are definitely threats for sure. But uh, for complexity, I would expect them to have a hero, at least part-time, kind of hanging around that mid lane and, and trying to give that Sniper just a little bit of backup. If, if he does end up, uh, end up needing it. A Winter Wyvern remaining. can very easily save a Sniper's life. Not a big deal at all. Dire Beastmaster will band out, still looking for that, uh, well, it looks like both offlane heroes. The Moo, what can... Radiant Team Pick. Elder Titan. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Blackwork. Choose your hero.
really bad, man. Uh, either way, it is a very, very powerful hero in lane, and when you're looking to build in towards the later stage, the Elder Titan's aura... can itemize against, but it's also something that they don't really want to heavily prioritize as far as their itemization is concerned. Again, as Luna, you don't build armor. You don't want to build armor. As Death Prophet, you get a Shiva's Guard eventually, but it's not going to be your first item. It's not going to be your second item. It might be your second item. It's still going to take a long time to actually build up, so they very, very streamlined, almost kind of Drow Ranger-esque draft from the complexity yeah, side without that. needing to pick up that high-risk hero in the Drow. Of course, that's not going to come out till later. The Elder Titan's lane is uh, very dangerous if he gets support. If he's by himself, even if you do jump uh, with the Natural Spirit over here, have him walk over here, and just get all these neutrals worth of damage in your spirit, you still have to chase down a Luna and kill her off. Just with right clicks. That's not going to happen. Bane as well can just put you to sleep, so you're, all your damage is going to go down the drain. So uh, definitely a inconsistent offline hero. But hey, we've seen ETs just run a train on their opponents. With a little bit of help from Winter Wyvern Slow or a Slardar Stun, you can definitely get the job done. Let's see who's going to be playing what. Looks like Sneaking's all alone on this like top half of the map. Like This is all this all belongs to Sneaking right now. He's going to be playing the Clockwork on the Those Sand King. Seconds. I believe we got Roya playing the Death Prophet. Stand King is on the Bane. That leaves Ahsoka on the Luna. Again, Ahsoka equals Yawar. But I'm going to be calling him Ahsoka because he's tagged up like that. And that means he wants to be called that. There you go. On the complexity side, we got Z-Freak playing the Winter Wyvern. Moo is on the Elder Titan. Kind of looks like a cow. A little bit. Got the horns, at least. Kyle's playing the Slardar. On the Sniper, we got Limp. And up towards top lane, Chessie's going to be chugging up there as the Tiny. A little bit of a skirmish here for this first bounty rune. Not really. It's just going to be them swooping in. Going to be a two for two, though. Uh, Sneaking is able to grab both bounty runes for himself on that top lane. Still a two for two, and we'll see how much help they actually want to give Moo. First Spirit was eh, kind of mediocre, but uh, for the most part, this Elder Titan with Winter Wyvern can do a lot of damage if they find their angles. Boots first in the Sand King will be a little bit difficult to deal with. Again, Bane is one of the tankier support heroes, tankiest support heroes you can pick up. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm not a huge believer in E.T. Really, uh, I don't, like, he gets the damage right now. They have the burn. They can force this Luna back simply because they have the movement speed advantage. But now that the spirit damage is, is kind of dwindling, what else do they have? They don't really have much. Winter Wyvern's going to get Burrow Struck up and just chase down with a Brain Sap. Will die. Mu has grabbed a little bit of damage from additional spirit, chasing after Stan King. But again, this is a Bane we're talking here. You can't easily kill him off. So, Mu, even with... What was that? Like plus, Let's say it was plus 40 damage. It's still not really going to be enough. Thinking in the meantime, should be just fine on the top lane. Going up against two melee heroes with the cogs at his advantage. Burning out the tiny is... Used to be a really solid strat as far as kind of neutering him in lane. Not really as much anymore since tree grab is dirt cheap. But still, he's going to be very resistant to the offensive powers of the complexity top lane. So I expect Sneaking to have a very safe lane. Maybe not the most CS necessarily, but uh, for sure he's going to have a very safe experience until he gets just massively out of position and gets crushed. Or there's a rotation. Uh, either way, it, it should be quite safe. Over in mid lane, Limp is taking a lot of damage from just random sources, creeps, aggro, stuff like that. He'll be just fine, and as long as this bottom lane can kind of occupy the supports of Stan King and Flea, then Limp can continue to remain probably at worst on par with the Death Prophet. Death Prophet has the damage advantage, she has the nuke advantage, but she has a much worse projectile. You expect this lane to just kind of end up drawing even Kyle. He's sprinting away. He cannot sprint fast enough! Are you kidding me? This battery assault's really gonna get the kill? It's a level 2 battery assault. Slaughter has boots and sprints. But he's still got chased down because this has, 
I don't even know what percentage equivalent it would be in slow, but my god, it's enough. Z Freak, though, ooh, not to be outdone, is gonna snipe a courier. I mean, getting a kill for sneaking is, is quite nice, but losing the courier in, uh, in exchange, yeah, that, that's fairly costly. Sneaking will find Kyle once again with the battery assault. Avalanche gonna bail him out. Chessy is gonna be able to chuck a tree. That's about it, though, on the bottom lane in the meantime. 90 Knight, Elder Titan, he's gonna wake up with the Burrow Strike. Ahsoka is gonna be here with the beam as well. Moo is gonna get beamed up. It's gonna be a very easy kill as the ET. Level 3 has gotten quite a bit of experience, but outside of that, cannot really apply much pressure to this lane by his lonesome. An ET, we see him occasionally play as, as kind of like a supporty type hero, not really given much uh, room to farm. If you do get a lot of farm time on the Elder Titan, you usually just build kind of supporty items anyway. Very aura based builds. Uh, first of all, you want to get your mana sustained situation all sorted out with that soul ring. Sometimes you see arcane boots, but uh, usually it's going to be like medallion type items, lads type items. Not really heavy hitting items, just very supporty. Dan King is kind of getting baited in a little bit, but uh, Winter Wyvern still being a little bit hesitant here. They have the spirit on the return. Stan King has a nightmare. And Moo is charging in really quickly with a lot of damage. Stan King can just put him to sleep and walk away, so that was kind of anticlimactic. You see CS starting to be built up. All three of these Radiant Heroes, in fact. Clockwork has gotten a lot more raw CS than I expect. Just the lack of threat here for the Clockwork. Plus the fact that he's able to kill off the Slaughter. It certainly doesn't hurt. Gives him a, a little bit of a safe and secure early game. See the advantage though, still is completely dead even despite three kills going the way of VGJ Storm. That courier snipe definitely is going to balance things out quite a bit. And you know, they're doing well on a lot of heroes, but Complexity are doing very well on just a, a couple more. Got to keep our eye on stacks. See what, uh, what the Tiny can do with that. Isn't really going to be looking to clear them up until the tree grab gets maxed out and still he's a long ways away. So far Kyle has done about nothing. And there's not many great situations for a Slardar to help out. You land a crush onto Roya, you're gonna do a little bit of damage with the shrapnel with the right clicks, but you're not gonna be able to out-sustain the Spirit Siphon. They're gonna try it anyway, but Siphon's already up, and Roya is gonna just, yeah, lose about half his HP. It wasn't, wasn't a bad damage trade, it was in fact really good for Complexity, but that's still not gonna help Kyle actually uh, get any further in this game. So, it, it's a little bit of an empty rotation there. If he's able to grab a couple of bounty runes, then you know, that'll be great for the Slardar to try to get some experience going. But going all the way towards bottom lane, kind of snaking behind the supports of EJ Storm and gets a good position onto UR. Now this is a very good opportunity for Kyle, but at the same time, he's surrounded. He doesn't know about it. Smoke's going to be broken. Stan King and Fleet both being spotted now as Kyle's going to line up a crush. Will land onto one, and the Burrow Strike misses from Fleet. But at the same time, so does the Stomp. So yeah, there you go. Everyone's gonna miss all their spells. Nobody's gonna die. It's all it's all okay. No panic. Again, this this Elder Titan is just such a finicky hero. Sometimes when you're able to land those stomps into the Earth Splitter, just having that spirit there with the aura, it just absolutely destroys your opposition. Other times you just can't do that, and it just doesn't do anything. Oh, Z Freak with the greed. Decided not to throw a deny into that rune. Is gonna get just chunked down by the DD Bane. Does some pretty decent damage himself, and he has Limp coming in. Stan King may have overplayed his hand, because he's going to get shot straight in the face. Splinter Blast trying to seal the kill. It doesn't matter. Limp got it, and that's all that matters. Sniper getting a pretty much freebie. He's starting to pull ahead slightly over the Death Prophet, but uh, this advantage for the Sniper is not something that the Death Prophet can't come back from. Kyle, though, is in a bad spot. Can't miss a Burrow Strike at that range. Beamed up and... Perfectly chain stunned thanks to a little bit of a mini stun from the Lucid Beam. I do like the idea of giving the Slaughter this off lane, but uh, he can do even less than the Elder Titan up against this trio of heroes. It's just such a clean setup with the Nightmare into Burrow Strike or just walk into Burrow Strike. It works so perfectly every single time. Unless they're staggered in a bad spot, Flea and Stan King are going to be separated and cannot initiate onto uh, the Z Freak Winter Wyvern in time. Sniper, though, is level 7, maxed out Shrapnel. I mean, that damage over time, oh, they can definitely kill off this Bane. Wandered in way too far. 
And he's gonna Nightmare himself, but that doesn't actually do anything anymore. Hookshot coming in, though, from sneaking. Gets crushed in the face. Kyle is definitely gonna fall here, unless they embrace. Someone's actually targeting him. Still will fall. Now two-man Burrows. Like, with the ghosts out, Z-Freak is gonna fall. Limp as well. Sneaking grabs a triple kill with his battery salts, canceling the TP. And look at that. Hey, there's a tower right here to exercise. Evil spirits be gone. We are always gonna get to work on that one. And complexity. Find a nice little angle to kill off that Bane, but uh, did not expect Sneaking's rotation. The level 7 clockwork with maxed out battery assault. You do not want to underestimate this guy. He will just destroy you. And at the same time, will not be destroyed because, hey, it's a clockwork. He's very, very bulky. Bottom lane move is potentially in a little bit of trouble here. Flea does have a Burrow Strike. He's right on Moo's tail. Will land. Ahsoka's a little bit slow incoming, but with the Eclipse in range, should have enough to get the kill, and they will do very, very cleanly get the kill on Moo. Complexity are kind of bleeding out here at this point. We can see a six kill deficit. Yet still, they're doing okay. I mean, the, the gold lead is almost completely dead even. Just now it turns into VGJ's favor. But, uh, you know, even though Sniper did go down there, you still have to deal with Chessy. Got maxed out toss at the moment. Level nine means no one hero can very easily go up towards his top lane and have a good time. Which takes so much threat just with toss spam and trees being thrown at him. It's not fun. Tiny's gonna go straight for Shadow Blade, trying to get active a little bit earlier instead of going for the SMY. Shot in, sneaking, ooh. Almost lands onto Kyle. Second hook shot is a dud, but the first hook shot was so good that I'm pretty sure they're not gonna be bothered too much by it. Tower's gonna be slowly but surely ground down, limp. Really needs that farm space and the safety provided by this tier one. Very important for Complexity to hold this tower. But it's also very difficult to hold. It's a Luna Death Prophet draft after all. Of course, Luna is nowhere to be seen. She's actually gonna give the lane to Flea. Level six on the Sand King, quite nice, but uh, really you just wanna level up that Burrow Strike as high as it can go. Is holding a point here. I don't know if there's any situation where you don't get Burrow Strike, but hey, he's got it in his back pocket when he needs it. Shadow Blade now up on the Tiny. No components shown off just yet, so there's a chance that someone on VJ Storm is going to stumble into an invisible rock monster and just get their faces pushed in. If you can land that gank onto Rora, that's obviously the highest value here. Luna is also very easy to kill, but uh, much further away. Join up with Kyle. Chessie can toss Kyle in or crush. Very easy to initiate there, or just walk in. And start beating face. Roya is going to take a huge hit from that Shadow Blade. Toss is there and instantly dead. Hookshot comes up for the clockwork, but 1v3 is not a fight that Sneaking wants to take. We'll still do a lot of damage to Kyle, and with the beam coming in from the Luna, we'll get the kill. Nightmare, Burrow Strike is going to be overlapped, so I think they blocked the damage there. And now Flea is going to <laughs> flee with a bullet to the back. He's going to get a coward's death, and it looks like Stan King will survive. BGJ Storm bring everyone and their mom over to this. Okay, that was uh, interesting. Over to this mid lane, and end up doing about no damage to the complexity heroes. I mean, they do get the kill on the Slardar, and that is something, I suppose. But this Slardar really just did all he needed to do: just land a crush on the Clockwork and then die. Obviously, you'd rather not die. You'd kind of want to build up your uh, gold for the Blink Dagger. He's very poor at the moment, but it's all about that Shadow Blade tiny. We'll see how much of a menace Chessy can actually be. Has a fully armed tree. Unfortunately, is lacking a target. Ahsoka, you are, is going to back off. But that Death Prophet, man. The additional, what is it, 150 Shadow Blade break damage? 175, I'm sorry. Combined with the fact that he already has about that much with his regular right click. Yeah, you know, just a casual double damage hit from a tiny. No big deal. Jesse's going to be just that lurking assassin. And for right now, BGJ Storm, you can see, giving him quite a bit of respect, are grouped up on this top lane around Roya. So, though they are grouped up, they can certainly make this grouping work out for themselves in the form of a push. But you definitely don't want to be a random hero jungling here. Like, this is like a gigantic dead zone right now until they actually have eyes once again on Chessie. Which, which they do. So, you know, now they can really go in, but uh, if you don't have vision, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Speaking of a lot of trouble, Z-Freak is going to get spotted by the flare. Going to try to fly away. Jukes for all he's worth. And then TP out Flea. 
is going to miss his burrow strike and sneaking does not have visual confirmation so he's not going to go for the hook shot nice juking and jabbing there from the winter wyvern but uh, still doesn't die will not be able to save his tower a lot of heroes on this top lane see this push from chessie is starting to pick up pace Kyle's getting a lot of valuable free farm as well as limp. Clearing out the stack over the tiny. Pretty much slower, but hey, there's a ooh, maelstrom right around the corner. Does he have the hammer? I assume he has the hammer. Oh my god, this carry is loaded. Got a drum for the Elitian, the hammer, and uh, still need a recipe. Shot in, they found Kyle. 1v3, good luck, Slardar. I'm not really sure what he's supposed to do there except for crush and wait for death. Feels bad, man. Jesse, though, is here. Hopefully, Invis lands the shot onto two with the cleave damage. Does a lot of damage here. Now can try to focus down to Sneaking. Assassination coming through. Will not get the kill, but the tree toss will. He gets gripped, though, and with the Eclipse, will cost them Chessie. Not worth it at all. That was a bold move to begin with, trying to go for two heroes there. Knowing the fact that the VGJ Storm are in this area. So you gotta get the kill out and then get out very quickly. You can't afford to dick around. Only by himself, Tiny definitely could have used some help there, but I'm not really sure where the rest of Complexity were. I mean, obviously the Sniper helped out as much as he could, but that is entirely a situation where you need a Winter Wyvern to throw in a Curse, or an Elephant to throw in a Stomp, just any sort of combo breaker to get your Tiny just a couple of split seconds to wand up and maybe Shadow Blade out of there. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Fortunately, is not going to be happening. Still, despite being five kills behind, Complexity are working with a little bit of a gold lead here. And a lot of it is funneled into chest, so oh look shot in. They will find themselves an Elder Titan. He's gonna throw out an Earth Splitter, which will land. Do a lot of damage thinking. Actually he's still alive! No way. Gets beamed up, but Lynch just right-clicking this bane. And now with the haze onto Ahsoka, look at the sniper's right clicks chunking her down. Double kill for the sniper. He had a double damage reading the entire time. That's why. And hey, look at that, another kill right around the corner as Roya gets jacked up by Chessy. Courier is going to be shielded. Man, that is such a small effect on Sniper. I can, like, barely see it, even though I'm now Radiance looking for it. DD on Sniper. An unpleasant surprise here for VGJ Storm as they just get into a feeding frenzy over in the mid lane. Z Freak is going to be do 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 by Flea. Probably just to death. No, well, Curse is there, which will keep the Burrow Strike from being cast. There was no mana anyway. Well played indeed. Z Freak is going to make another escape out of this top lane. And Limp is going to cash in huge in that exchange over in mid. Oh, Chessie <laughs> runs into a Bane. I'm getting caught part of your plan. Pretty sure it wasn't. This guy is, is a deadly assassin. Isn't really working with, like, the most conventional tiny assassination build. So that's just not how tiny works nowadays. But, man, if you run into this guy, you're going to get your face pushed in. No problem whatsoever. So now Complexity are working with a little bit of momentum. The way they capitalize on this, outside of taking towers with the Sniper and the Tiny, is by trying to get Kyle enough space to farm with his Blink Dagger. He's been having a really tough time surviving. Every single time a fight goes right for Complexity, it seems like Kyle is the first one to go down. Sometimes witnesses of kills, level 10 on the Slardar is actually really, really high. That is surprisingly high, actually. But, I mean, level, levels on Slardar, they don't really mean all that much compared to whether or not he has a Blink Dagger. And obviously, he doesn't right now. If you can get that, they can definitely keep this train rolling. Oh yeah, he's gonna get hazed up. There was a third hero here, for sure they can make a play, but the uh, well, hero they really need is Moo, who's in trouble. Blink Bro Strike is here from Flea, and they've caught themselves in ET. No chance to stomp here, so he's just gonna fight his way out. Doing a lot of damage sneaking, and actually is fighting for a lot longer than he really should. But with the rest of the DJ side coming in, we'll converge on and kill off that... Okay, because Chessie came. What? I was watching the wrong hero die. Chessie was coming in to back him up. And apparently just got jacked up by a sentry ward place earlier. And now it's going to be Flea leading the way into Limp. Here comes the epicenter. Really far away. Four staff forward. Ah, hits him with a couple of those epicenter pulses. But Limp has a four staff of his own. Plus several layers of shrapnel. Plus no hook shot to deal with. He's going to try to straight TP out. And he will make it out alive. The limp is going to be just fine, but this tower certainly will not be. Ahsoka and Roya just going to work there. Stomp is going to come in, land onto absolutely everything. Moves going to deploy the Earth Splitter. And it's going to kill the Catapult. Got him. Over in Bottom Town in the meantime, it's Slaughter in a little bit of trouble once again. We'll see if he's going to die to the grip, but Roya's going to chase down by Moo. 
with the help of Z-Freak. And bottom lane will be Kyle. Probably going down. There is a not much here on the stanking, but how the hell did he nightmare from that far away? That was a little bit ridiculous. Kyle is gonna not land the crush because wow, Flea broke the nightmare, gave himself invulnerability, and therefore blocked the crush. I'm pretty sure it didn't matter. They would have had the kill anyway, but that was actually sick. You could just take the nightmare and take that small invulnerability frame. Killing off the Slardar yet again. But this time at the cost of the Death Prophet, Roya sticking around the top lane for a little bit too long. Trying to greed out with that Exorcism, does about half damage to this tower. Not bad, but uh, certainly not worth the death. In the meantime, Force Staff saving his bacon once. We go for the extra range. He really does need, though, these kind of frontline heroes. The Tiny, the Blink, the Slardar. Hell, even just a, a random stomp from the Elder Titan to land if he's actually going to be doing damage safely. Because of the Blink Dagger on the Sand King with the Hookshot Sniper. Though he does have his defensive options in that four Staff, soon to be Hurricane Pike. These are uh, still not going to keep him completely safe. It will smoke up now. Blair is going to see that no one's in Roche. Dire Scan is going to stay green, so there's no vision here for the Dire until the Elder Titan Wandering Spirit and Kyle Smoke Breaking will reveal that someone's in this general area. Not really sure if that's something that they capitalize off of, though. Top lane is something that they really would want because it's such an easy grab, but uh, not once it's defended by the entirety of Storm's side. They're kind of okay just letting Limp farm. Limp and Chessy, they'll just get up to critical mass and just start plowing forward. BJ Storm will have a Luna who's farming pretty quickly as well. Death Prophet, though, just naturally cannot farm as fast as these heroes will eventually fall behind. If for any reason BJJ Storm stop continuously getting objectives, then Death Prophet yeah, will kind of just naturally fall behind. You, you really want to be playing the offensive game as DP. Whereas for Tiny, okay, slow rolling the game, Sniper, same exact thing. But this game state is going to be very favorable for the complexity heroes and it does seem like they're getting just slightly more gold in this game state. They're just farming slightly more efficiently. They have the Slardar with the Blink Dagger pretty much locked up. Not the fastest in the world, but uh, better late than never. Actually giving a lot of momentum to this bottom lane. If Limp decides to actually join in... They have an Observer in the area, which we'll see... You can maybe teleport back here and be safe. But this tower is actually almost dead to begin with. Towers probably will be traded though. Soko with the Mask of Madness is going to do this tower in very quickly. For one, easy peasy. Even though VJ Storm, they do need to take the towers. Complexity can... It does feel like they can do a little bit more with towers being down. They have the Tiny, they have... With Shadow Blade really gets uh, the most benefits from having fewer towers on the enemy side. Of course, Clockwork does get quite a few benefits as well, but uh, the fact that this hero is just so naturally bulky and is going to go for Blade Mail means that in any given situation, if you really need to, you can tower dive. Tiny really doesn't want to do that. He's getting some armor now. 10 isn't bad, but yeah, he really just wants to be able to get those assassinations at will. You can't, obviously can't do that very easily if you're diving a tower. Rioja is going to show himself off in mid. It's the only hero that they actually see. Sentry's on the deck. Chessie's arrival will be spotted. 2400 HP worth of Tiny, plus an absolute F ton of status resistance. First try, hookshot, and not really going to do a ton for them. Even going to go for, hey, look at that, 100% status resistance. Not quite, in the BKB. Close enough. Definitely a little bit of a, a vision game going on right now. Sneaking's Flare is constantly being thrown out. Will unfortunately not help the Death Prophet. Invisible Tiny out of nowhere. Blink Slardar out of nowhere as well. Yora is going to get instantly put into the ground. Kyle rotating out is going to find with Moo snaking. He's going to immediately get hazed up. Crush is going to be dodged by the Force Staff. So will that stomp. He's even going to hook shot up. They do know about that, of course. Full vision is provided by that haze. But just that one pick off of the Death Prophet, and we can see Complexity immediately converging into Roche. Corrosive Haze. Glimpse damage output. Chessie's damage output should make this 
pretty quick Roshan, but at the same time, DJ Storm, they can still mess with this. They have Eclipse, they have a Blink Epicenter, which, speaking of, is coming in. It's gonna completely miss the Burrow Strike, though. So the Epi does a decent amount of damage. The Stomp is gonna land onto two and completely separate Flea from his allies. That's gonna lead to his death. Kyle, hazing up everyone right now. Assassination going on to Stan King. Blink forward for a crush or just one hit. Boom. Oh, Nightmare Dodge by Stan King. What a god. Cannot dodge the secondary nuke coming in, though, in the spirit. Sick attempt there from the Bane, but ultimately, they try to greed out a little bit too much in complexity. Saw that coming a mile away. Roshan will be put in the bag. Chessie grabs an Aegis, and everyone from complexity and me, A-okay. You are, didn't have any part of that. An Eclipse probably would have gotten a kill, but definitely would have cost the Luna her life if she decided to join that fight. So, a little bit of a split pushy type play. Puts about half damage into this top tier 3. Not bad at all. But bleeding out in these heroes with very little response. Like, I really can't blame BGJ Storm for going for that. Because it seems like something that they maybe do. Assuming the god epicenter. But no hookshot means getting in there is just so difficult. And of course you don't have your death profit. So it's even more difficult. Oh, speaking of difficulties. Clockwork is going to get hazed. Not much help here. Just Moo and Kyle. So that'll show him one crush. Back off. Bottom tower is under attack. Noir is pretty farmed, but he's still behind the sniper and the tiny. Net worth wise, Luna is going to be kind of uh, just out outgunned, quite literally, actually. Tiny also is pushing that level three grow mark. Even more status resistance, why not? Even more damage, why not? Radiant structures are fortified. He just, oh, double damage. Limp. That has your name on it. We would rather Radiance give it to Chessie. And looks like they're feeling comfortable enough to just uh, keep their smoke. They are going to run sneaking from behind. Currently, they are spotted by nothing it looks like. Oh, they'll find the crush just on the edge for the clockwork. He's hazed up. He has blade mail on, but assassination is going to be missed, actually. Cast it on a creep. Now will be casted correctly, and we'll get the kill. You gotta wait for the uh, blade mail timeout before you shoot him in the face. Soka's pushing all the while, doing her best. But uh, not really sure if Luna can outpush both Sniper and Tiny. They're gonna get to work on the top lane. I actually picked up that DD. Did the, sni did the clock work out? Ooh. I don't, I don't, I don't freaking know. But either way, this hour is gonna be taken. Tier 2 for Tier 1. We can see this game state for complexity. Kill here, a kill there. A split push from a Luna is not really going to bother Complexity to the point where they're going to have to drastically change their playstyle. So the fact that they're getting kills is great. The fact that they're getting towers, perhaps even better. And they're just getting all the farm in between. So VGJ Storm definitely need to make some sort of team fight happen. I feel like that's probably where they're at their strongest. Get the epicenter, get the exorcism going. Even have a freaking Heaven's Halberd on the Death Prophet. So for sure can have good answers to the Sniper, to the Tiny. Well, <laughs> I mean, to some extent, still gotta grind through this gigantic rock monster twice. Good luck. But as long as Complexity are just playing that uh, very, very ratty type of style, they're just gonna be pulling further and further ahead. Really, uh, no way for VJ Storm to break out of this, except for that giant kind of cataclysmic team fight. Sneaking is under vision right now. Does he know about it? it. Seems like he does know about it. Yeah, there's an observer back here. Kind of obvious. Flea, though, uh, he has a four staff. No? Okay, he's dead. Up towards the top side, Roya. Oh, he has a Yule Scepter, but he has no TP. It's not even going to matter that Yule Scepter just gets obliterated by the crush and the right click from the sniper. VJ Storm needs to make something happen. They are bleeding out heroes very, very quickly. And even though the Luna has now picked up her farm paces on top of the net worth charge, she's the only one who's farming here. No one else on Complexity is getting any sort of, on VJ uh, uh, Storm rather, is getting any sort of respectable farm. Holy crap, there's a Blink Dagger Glimmer Cape on Z Freak. Winter Wyvern doesn't really farm that quickly either, but Winter Wyvern has kind of been just dealing with Luna's push, which means that he's been getting like all these free creep waves that are already kind of banged up, so he could very easily snipe him out with Splinter Blast. Speaking of sniping people, Stan King's gonna get Avalanche and tossed up. Hookshot's gonna interrupt the crush, but they can't easily get that kill. Now, Chessie, well, he's gonna get gripped, but so much status resistance, that grip didn't last at all. 
Oh, that feels so bad as a Bane. Now she's gonna get picked apart by Limp from a distance. Here comes the bullet to the brain. No nightmare in time. We'll get a very free kill. Chessie still has the Aegis, so he doesn't give a damn about this tier three. And my god, Flea's getting obliterated by level two Corrosive Haze. Chessie is gonna get lifted, and he's gonna lose his Aegis probably. He will. But they don't really care about that because that's what Aegis is for. Gonna pop right back up and uh, once again start pushing this wave. Soka is gonna be able to split push this bottom wave, but obviously top and mid are kind of in full breach right now. No Sand King alive. Right now, no hookshot means that this tower is easy pickings. Got a pipe coming out as well, so Eclipse from the Luna is gonna be much less effective. Kyle, Blink Crush, a little bit off. But, hey, it's not a big deal. Chessie does have to watch out. Gets four staff into not quite the cogs. That would have been absolutely nasty from sneaking. Why why use hookshot when you could just use hookshot to pull? Can you, you can, can you do that in Legends of Zelda? Can you hookshot pull things? It can, but you need, like, weight boots? I don't know. It's been a long time. Either way, the tower's going to be picked out by Wimp. Of course, these shrines don't stand a chance in hell. Complexity just slowly but surely collapsing this map and BJJ Storm so far with absolutely no response. Moo is gonna put some uh, get warded actually. Then his spooky spirit out. Man, what is it with this game and just like everyone having some way of like getting a spirit? Seems like all of these this genre has a lot of undead. Turns out. In case you guys didn't know. Spooky scaries. No racks have been taken just yet for complexity. But they're not completely wrecking BGJ Storm across all fronts. But uh, it's kind of getting to that point. Like, Z Freak hasn't. He hasn't even, like, been needed in this game, like, at all. He's got the Blink Dagger and the Curse and the Embrace, so he can very easily get to where he needs to be. Of course, he has Glimmer Cape as well. With the Pipe Barrier from the Elder Titan. Magic damage. It's not even going to do it, man. The best chance they have is trying to get a, a grip on the Tiny and trying to get him killed off very quickly, but he has so much status resistance. How much? 23.4. That doesn't count the, uh, the additional 40. So yeah, the grip, it lasted like a second and a half. It's supposed to last a little bit longer than that. Just a, just a little bit. You can still grip him even if he's BKB'd, but I'm not really sure if that's going to do anything. Sneaky Sneaky Roya is going to try to uh, creep cut, but there is a Wyvern on the case. They have a curse if they want to do anything. Okay, I guess Z Freak wasn't looking. Shit happens. Definitely worth the curse. There's no way that Death Prophet gets out of that afterwards. And again, he hasn't really been playing the game. He's mostly been on counter push duty, so you might as well use the curse. Even in a quote-unquote less than ideal situation. BGJ are going to group up towards top. It may be a little bit too late for this, though. I mean, this is, again, still the best chance of uh, having complexity group up a little bit too much. Maybe uh, destroy them in an exorcism and an epicenter. But now that the pipe is up, and now that <laughs> complexity are 16k ahead, it does seem like even if that all happens, like, the best they can hope for BGJ Storm is an even trade. Which they're definitely going to take, but uh, they would kind of like better than that. See, he's going to get to work on the melee racks. I mean, Limp is trying as well, but uh, Tiny is tiny, you know? Top lane, a lot of momentum going back in towards the Dire, but I'm pretty sure they don't really care too much about that. They'll grab the melee racks and back off. Top lane is still pushing, but uh, again, this isn't really a huge concern for complexity. They are looking for more in the form of objectives. They will find a clockwork and a death prophet. He is, however, going to get avalanche tossed and just... You know, he'll have to save himself for a little bit. The eclipse does go out, but everyone is matched me except for Z Freak, who's going to have the embrace for himself, so he's going to be just fine. Crush coming in for Kyle will seal the deal onto Roya and will absorb the entire epicenter. Kyle absorbing so many bullets for his team, and he's not even going to go down. Spirit now going to land Stomp onto Sneaking, crush him into the dirt as the tree's going to fly in. Oh my god, the damage! Oh, there was a Bane there, but no longer. And ultimately, they do take down only the Winter Wyvern. Chessie has the heart. He's back up to full HP. Lee is behind, but just a Santa King with no Epicenter can't really do much here. Despite the fact that he's looking at Limp, he really wants it. He doesn't have enough damage to do it, even if he was to YOLO in. Buyback 
from Ahsoka is really crushed, is there. Gets forced to have to out by Sneaky, so we'll be fine for right now. So there's no creep wave coming in through top, only creep wave is in the mid lane, so this push is going to be a little bit awkward for complexity. Looks like they will decide to fall back. Hey, look at that, fall back into Roche. Uh, I'm not sure if there has been a flare there recently. Snake game bought back as well, so complexity taking a massive kill exchange. In addition to that, we'll force out buybacks at the cost of none of their own. And we'll have Roshan take shortly. And that death profit. Evan's Halberd is a great item right now, but it's just still not durable enough to withstand that Tiny's Onslaught. And then the Sniper's Onslaught as well. Evan's Halberd range isn't that high compared to Sniper's effective range, which is absolutely disgustingly huge. I feel like this is not accurate. Is this attack range accurate? Hurricane Pike and maxed out the take aim. I feel like it should be larger than that, but either way. Glimpse still got a lot of safety here. We'll make the conservative call despite the Crows of Haze. We'll back out of Roshan and just try to set up and receive BJ. Vision-wise, there is none here for the Dire. Everyone on the BJ side is smoked. We'll back off with Chessy Invisible leading the way. We'll look for a little bit of wraparound. They will have the spirit constantly pushing out. Chessy will lose his invis, but he is feeling so confident being 4,500 HP worth of rock monster with insight aura, backing him up with BKB. What are you supposed to do against this? Lim's gonna pop his own BKB. Oak chapter sneaking is good. Lands on a two, but they're gonna line up for Chessy to start beating through all of them. That's immediately two down. soko has got his own BKB, but it's not doing nearly enough damage. The grip goes on to the slaughter, but it's fine because he's got the embrace and it's a slaughter at the end of the day. They don't really care if they lose Kyle because Chessy and Lim are still beating face. In fact, GG is called. Four for none. Looking for that five for none. Not gonna happen. But it doesn't really matter. Oh, will it happen? No, not quite. Even with the hook shot onto the sniper, even with such a messed up, clumped up fight there, which is usually gonna.